Hi everybody. All right, today for math, you're going to need a crayon or um, a pen or something besides your pencil, one of those writing utensils. You're gonna need the perimeter and area page, and you're going to need the grids page. Mine is front and back. I won't use a Sharpie this time, so it doesn't bleed through. You'll need perimeter and area, and you'll need grids, as well as a crayon or a pen, something different than your um, pencil to write with. Um, okay, I have one hand. I have a sleeping baby. Hopefully she will wake up. All right, we're gonna look at um, okay, you're looking at this rectangle and this square right here, that red square in the top corner. A square with a side length of one unit, see how the red says one unit square? A square or shape that has a measurement of one unit. Um, is called a unit square. So the distance around the rectangle, what do you call the distance around the rectangle? Not the inside part, the measurement. If you were gonna walk all the way around the edges and measure that, what would that be called? Okay, that's called the perimeter. Perimeter is the distance around a figure. Perimeter is measured in units. And perimeter is the sum of the side lengths. If you were to walk around this rectangle, you'd be walking around the perimeter. How would you find the perimeter of the rectangle? Okay, you'd add the length of the sides. So we have four, six, four, and six, which we decided was 20. Ready. With that in mind, take out that perimeter and area page. Perimeter and area. And take yours out. I'll get mine out. Okay. On this page, I'd like you to look at number one. Number one right there. Okay, I want you to find the perimeter of the figure in number one. And on the line underneath the shape, I want you to write the equation um, there to find the perimeter. So, I'm gonna find the perimeter of number one and write your equation. Perimeter is the sum of the side lengths. The sum of the side lengths. You should have written something like four plus eight plus six plus four. How can you find this answer quickly? Well, first of all, I can see a 10. If I make this, put the six and the four together, I see a 10 plus eight gives me 18. And if I count on from 18, four more, 18, 19, 20, 21, what do you get for the answer in number one for per the perimeter? 22, but not just 22. What's your label in perimeter? Four plus eight, plus six, plus four, is 22 inches 22 inches okay now do the next do the same thing with number two find the perimeter of number two write your equation okay perimeter is the side the sum of the side lengths when you hear sum, you know that you're doing what operation? 
the sum is addition. So you should have, for number two, something like five plus four plus three. Okay, in my brain, five plus four is nine, plus three more gives me 12, right? And what is your label? The answer is not just 12. 5 plus 4 plus 3 equals 12 yards. 12 yards. That's if you are going to walk around the shape. You're not messing with the inside part. If you were to walk around the outside shape, you'd get 12 yards. Okay? Alrighty. Next, we're gonna be looking at uh, the next couple numbers here. We're going to solve perimeter and area word problems and determine what the solution will be, okay? Use your problem solving model to solve each problem. So let's talk about that. Your problem solving model, that's your plan that we always use. Number one always is, What is the question What is the question asking us to find? Number 2 What information is given? It's not necessarily gonna be what do you already know. It's gonna be what does it give you, okay? There's a difference. What is the question asking us to find? What is the information given? The third thing we ask ourselves is what is the operation? Is it gonna be addition, subtraction, multiplication or division what is the operation i think that actually has two p's in it what is the operation and what is the equation and finally does your answer make sense. This is your problem solving plan. This is your problem solving model. Plan, model, same kind of thing. Okay, so think about these questions as we continue. We're going to use number three. So you're going to use this grid here to find the perimeter and the area of the shape we're going to read about. Okay. Haley's friend Elizabeth has a welcome mat with a picture of a beehive. The mat is three feet long and two feet wide. What is the perimeter of Elizabeth's mat? What is the area of the mat? Okay. The first question asks us to find what? The first question is asking you to find the perimeter of the mat. Okay, so look at number three on perimeter and area. This page right here, you're gonna look at number three. Okay, you are going to be using this grid to picture, so make a picture of Elizabeth's welcome mat. How many units long is each side of the mat? Haley's friend Elizabeth has a welcome mat with a picture of a beehive. Just so you know, the picture of the beehive doesn't matter. It's extra information that you don't need. I mean, it helps you know what it looks like, but in order to figure out the perimeter, it's not information you need. So don't worry, don't let that uh, muddle your brain too much. Haley's friend Elizabeth has a welcome mat with a picture of a beehive. The mat is three feet long, two feet wide. 
how many units long is each side of the mat. If you were to draw it, it would be three units, two units, three units, two units, because it's a welcome mat, right? It's not gonna be a vertical rectangle. It would be horizontal. Okay, so I want you to take your crayon or your pen or your marker or whatever you have, and I would like you to draw the picture of that figure. I can, if you'd like to wait until you see mine, that's fine. Okay, here's how I drew mine. You see that it is, I think I'll have to stand up with this baby and show you. It is two on the side, three here, another two here, and three this way. The mat is three feet long, and it is two feet wide because we're using this grid. Remember, perimeter is measured in units, so square units, okay? So each unit here, this little one right here, from this corner down to here, eek, 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 eek. how much space does that represent in what we're finding? Three feet long, two feet wide. What is this little space right here? From here to here, how much? That would be one foot because we're measuring it in feet. So, if this is one foot, how can you find the perimeter of the whole mat? We have the length of the sides. You'll add three plus two plus three plus two. Three plus two plus three plus two. That's your equation. Three plus two plus three plus two equals, well, I see a three and a three to make a six, and a two and a two makes a four. Six and four together makes a ten. Or maybe you saw three and two and three and two, and you made five and five to make your ten. So the perimeter, the area of the length around the side of her that mat, is 10 and what is your label ten, and remember the perimeter is measured in the specific unit when i say unit with perimeter it just means it's kind of like it makes you uh, answer the question what is the label so the unit we are measuring in is feet so you should have 10 feet okay we're going to do the same Thing with finding the area right here. Remember the area when we're talking about a shape is the space inside a figure. Area is the space within a figure. Area is measured in square units. Area is the sum of the unit squares, the sum of what's inside. Okay. So we talked about the outside edges. Now we're going to talk about all the good stuff inside the shape. Okay, so if we're looking back at number three, the second question asks us to find the area of the mat. So one way you can find the area is by counting all the squares inside. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six inside this square. Yes? So the area of the welcome mat is six square feet. I'll show you that again and I'll use it in a different color. If I color in each little square, one, two, three, four, five, six. I colored in each square as I counted it. One, two, three, four, five, six. So where we have A equals, it's 
it's going to be a equals whoops i didn't write the right thing six square feet square units square label so the square means that they are even they are the same size inside all, all the little measurements inside are the same 10 feet around the mat six feet of space within the mat okay the area of the welcome mat is six square feet do that on your page and then get ready for number four get ready for number four going to find the perimeter and the area of another shape. Okay, you're going to find the perimeter and the area. I'll write it on the board here so you can see. You're going to find the perimeter of an area that is six yards long and five yards wide. Six yards long, five yards wide. Your job is to make that shape now on the grids for number four. Number four six yards long, five yards wide. Six yards long, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then five yards wide, one, two, three, four, five. So here's how I'm doing mine. Six yards long, I'm started in the corner this time. You don't have to, but I'm going to. Long. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna make mine bigger so you can see. Six yards long. And five yards wide. One, two, three, four, five. Each little line here represents one unit and the unit we are measuring in is yards. So here's one yard two yards, three yards, four yards, five yards wide, six yards long. Okay, find the perimeter. With perimeter, you're writing the equation, the distance around the shape. What is the equation you'd write for the distance around the shape? Maybe this is someone's yard. They want to put up a fence around their yard so they need to know how much fence equipment they need to buy in order to build a fence around their yard. Six long, five wide. What would your equation be? Six plus five plus six plus five. Six plus five plus six plus five. Five and five makes 10. And six and six makes 12. So the 10 and the 12 together gives me what? Twenty two. Twenty two what? It's 22 yards. Six and five is 11, six and five is 11. That's 22, another way you could solve that. Now you need to find the area. The area is what is inside. So you can do that by counting them inside. One, two, three, four, five. So if this is five, what's this? One, two, three, four, five. Well, so there's five 
10. This would be 15, 20, 25, 30. So the area, your area we counted was 30 square what? 30 square yards. 30, ooh, my SQ and my Y are kind of funny. SQ period, by the way, is what I'm using for square. Remember square meaning that these are all the same, the units inside are all the same shape, all the same size. 30 square units for number four. The perimeter around it is 22 yards. The area inside the shape in the purple is 30 yards. Okay. Alrighty. Now I want you to look at number five. Number five down here at the bottom. Each square in this shape, each square inside here represents one unit. We are not told what the measurement is. This time it doesn't say yards or inches or miles. When it doesn't have a label like that, you just call it a unit, like a unit of measurement, okay? For number five, each square represents one square unit. So how are you going to find the area of this region or this um, space? The area of this region, how are you gonna find it for number five? Think back to what we did yesterday. Okay, you could count all the squares inside if we count if we count all the squares that are inside the shape ooh, i gotta hold this just right one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven twenty eight twenty nine thirty the area inside the shape is thirty square units. What's another way? Do you remember from yesterday? Another way you can find the area inside a shape that's irregular like that. What do you think? You can partition it into two rectangles and then add the products of the two rectangles. So here's what this means. You could do If you separate them with a line like this, then you've got this top rectangle and this bottom rectangle. What you can do then is you add the products of the two rectangles, okay? So we're gonna use this strategy. What we might use here is um, this side here. I need to figure out how to write this upside down. There's three on this side of this array here. And then there's four going across. The way I'm gonna do that is that's gonna be the same as writing it as a multiplication equation. So I would have, I'll show you guys here in just a second. If you're wondering why I'm holding the baby and not just putting her down, it's because when she falls asleep in my arms, she wakes up when I put her down. I have not quite figured out how to put her down without waking her up. Okay. Here's what this is going to look like. And just bear, bear with me here. I'm going to show you something a little new. This is a three by four. Yes? Three by four array. Three, on, three rows with four in each. 
we're going to do a multiplication equation for this square, for the area here, and for the area of this one. And then we have to add the products of that. I'm going to erase this and show you a little better what I'm talking about. Okay, our first shape is three rows of four. We're going to put those together because that's part of one square. The total of that one we add to the total of the other shape, which look at your page, what is that? You see two rows, two ooh, rows of how many? two rows of nine. What we're going to do is find the product for this one first. What is three times four? Three times four is 12. What is two times nine? Count by two nine times or use your doubles, nine plus nine. 18. So the product of this one is 12. Product of this is 18. We add those together. 12 plus 8, well, 18 plus 12. 8 plus 2 gives you 10. Put that 10 over there. You get 30. If that was confusing for you, We'll rewind and rewatch it. When you find an area of an irregular figure, you can, I'm gonna put this here too. And I, you can split up the shape. You can split it up and you do the three times four, which gets you 12. And you add that to the total of this one. So you add all of this. You add all of the three times four area inside. Adding it to what two times nine is. So then you covered the whole shape. So if we have three times four, which was 12, and we add that to two times nine, you get 30, which when we counted all of the little individual squares, you remember that we got 30, but oh no, 30 what? What, what is the label for area? Thirty square. units, 30 square units, okay? Don't freak out, we're gonna do number six together, okay? I want you to notice number, what do you notice about number six? What do you notice about the shape or the figure in number six? Kind of looks like a house, kind of looks like a barn. Do you have only squares now that we're measuring with in number six. No, there are two squares in this shape that are only half shaded. So this square is only half and this square only has half. Do you see? We have two squares that are only half shaded. So how can we find the area? Another way to do this is to just count the squares. So if we just count the squares that are inside this shape, I'm going to start at the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This would be ten and one half square. If I have ten and one half and I add another half, one half plus one half gives you one whole. 
So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, plus one more gives you 11. Yep. So your area would be 11 square units. 11 square units because you have 10 squares and then this is one half and this is one half this is why we talked about fractions before we did this because you know that one half plus one half gives you a whole and 10 plus one more is 11. I want you to put that one aside and take out your grids page. Your grids page. On this one, you're going to show two rectangles with the same area and different perimeter or the same perimeter with different area. Hmm. On this grids page, um, look at section A. Section A, this is whole top part here. This all the way across. All of this is section A. This is where you're looking right now. Okay, how can you find the area of the first rectangle? How do you find the area of the first rectangle? Okay, multiply the length by the width is one way that you can find it. So, how many rows do I have in this first shape here? I have one row, one row, one unit, it says down over here. One unit by how many? 10. So the equation that you'll write on the perimeter line would be, I'm sorry, not the perimeter, the area. One times 10. One times 10 equals what? So your area is 10 square units. Okay, now I want you to find the area of the second rectangle of this one here. Find the area of that second rectangle got your labels, you have two rows of five. And what do you get? I wrote five times two equals 10 square units. You can count and double check if you want. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten square units. So what do you notice about these two that we've done, the area of these two rectangles, the space inside of them? You notice that they have the same area inside, but the lengths of them are different. The first rectangle only has one unit one row. The second rectangle has two rows or two, uh, two units on the side lengths. So I want you to think about this. That was the space inside the rectangles. I want you to predict what you think you'll notice about the perimeter, the length around the outside of those shapes. 
I want you to predict whether they will have the same perimeter or maybe a different perimeter. What do you think? Okay, to find the perimeter of the first one, you add all the side lengths. So you're gonna have one. Well, let's start up here, start at the top. 10 plus one. It's better if I stand. You'll do 10, so starting on this line here, don't forget about all these little lines on the inside. Those don't matter anymore. We found the inside. 10 plus one plus 10 plus one. Write that as your equation. 10 plus one plus 10 plus one. 11 plus 11 gives you 22, and it gives you your label, 22 units. Now find it for this one here, your perimeter, the area around it. You're adding with this perimeter. Five plus two plus five plus two. Five and five is ten. Two and two is four, and ten and four gives you fourteen. Okay, so take a look at both of these. What conclusion can you make about the rectangles? These two rectangles have the same area. The, the space inside of them is still 10 square units. But what about the outside length? The distance around the shape. Which one has the greater perimeter? This first one does. It has 22 units for perimeter whereas this one only has 14. So even though the amount of space inside the shapes is the same, the first one has a greater perimeter. Boom. Crazy, huh? Okay, let's bump you down. We're gonna go to section B now. I gotta move my clips around. Section B here in the middle. Section B, I want you to write an equation to find the area and perimeter of the first shape. It gives you, it gives you your labels. Remember the area is inside the shape, perimeter is the outside of the shape. So find that Gonna give you a little time to solve it. Area is inside. Perimeter is the length, the sum of the lengths of the sides. Let's see what you get. Ready? Mew. The area of this first shape is 20. You have four rows of five, or five uh, um, columns with four in each. However you write the equation, your answer would be that you have 20 square units inside this shape. The perimeter of it you add all of the sides together, you're not just adding the five and the four. You're not just adding the five and the four because you have this side here and this side here. This side would be four, same as this side. And then this side down here along the bottom is a five, just like this side. You cannot just add five and four, that gives you nine. And that does not take you all the way around the shape. Perimeter is every side.
So perimeter is addition, you have 18. Here's the challenge for you. I want you, I want you, what you are going to do is in this blank space here, it's not a mess up. In this blank space here, your job is to draw another rectangle that has the same area, but different perimeter. The same area as this first shape, but a different perimeter. So what does the area need to be of your second, uh, of your second shape? What does the area need to be if it's gonna match the first one? It needs to be 20. So the factor of five times four is 20. So you cannot make a shape that is a five by four, okay? This one is a five by four shape. You cannot make a rectangle like this. You have to think of something else. So what other, uh, what else do you know? Something times something equals 20. What are some other things you can think of? Well, what if I put a one here? If you have one unit like this, or the way that it would be on your thing is you'd have one unit going like this. How many, how many, well, what factor needs to go here to get 20? One times blank equals 20. So you could use this one. You're gonna have a one by 20. Woo! You're gonna have a one by 20. The inside is still 20. But your, your area will still be 20. Okay, what's another thing you can think of? Another way to get 20. What if I put a two here? What would have to go here? Two times what equals 20? We just talked about this in your um, last chapter with division. When we were talking about 10, if you think about it this way, what is 20? divided by two, that zero tells you that it's gonna be 10. Choose one of those two. Choose one of those two and make it in this blank space right here. Choose one of those two. Your area should end up being the same. So if I do your area should still be 20, but your perimeter will be different. Woo, I can't make straight lines. Oh my goodness. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Oh no, I need two more. Okay. If you need to pause so you can finish, you can. I made mine, not very straight, but I have 10 units by two units, which still gives me 10 square units, or excuse me, 20 square units. My area is the same. But if I find my perimeter, my perimeter equation will be 10 plus 2 plus 10 plus 2. 10 plus 2 plus 10 plus 2. 10 and 10 is 20. 2 and 2 is 4. 20 and 4 together is 
if you did the 1 times 20, I think your perimeter will also be different. Yes, it will be actually. So look, two different shapes with the same area on the inside, but the measurement of the outside sides is different. It is different. Um, what you're going to do um, is you're going to, everyone's going to have to do it. You're going to pause this video and you're going to do section C on the bottom the same way as we did to section B. But this time, I want you to find something with the same perimeter. So if we find the perimeter of C, this side is four and this side is four, which means that the bottom side will also be four and this side will be four. If you want to write that carefully there so you have each side labeled, you can. This is the perimeter now, the P. Your perimeter here is four plus four plus four plus four equals what? You have four fours. Sixteen units. Your perimeter of the shape that you're going to draw over here, the perimeter needs to be the same. The perimeter also needs to equal sixteen units. So do something similar like we did when we found with the other one, with the area, but this one will be the perimeter. You've got to, um, I'd like you to make a shape with the same perimeter as the first one, but it cannot be a four by four array. Make it different and then find the areas, okay? Um, take a picture of it and put it in your portfolio. I want to see how you compared Section C, the two shapes. So your job is to pause, finish section C, take a picture, post it in your portfolio. I'm serious. Pause and do it, but I gotta keep going. Once you've unpaused, did you pause? I hope you paused. Once you've unpaused, you need to turn in your workbook to page 216 to your serve with math page. We're going to do numbers five and six together. We're getting to the end of this chapter, you guys, already. Isn't that crazy? Okay, number five on page 216 says, Haley's new friends, Oscar and Elizabeth, want to build a honey stand in the shape of a hexagon. Each side will be eight feet long. What is the what is the perimeter okay that green shape there that is a hexagon hex hexagon that word the word g-o-n at the end the word gone um means like shape and hex like this means six so if you've got a hexagon and you have a six sided shape six sided figure. Each side of the hexagon is eight feet. Perimeter is the sum of the side lengths. So if each side is eight feet, eight feet long, what is the equation that you will write? They showed you one there. One side is eight feet. Eight, so you have eight feet plus 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 eight feet. So you could add eight six times or you could do what? Repeated addition is the same as multiplication. So you could do eight plus eight plus eight plus eight plus eight plus eight, or you can do six times eight. And what is your answer?
Okay, you should have gotten 48. So on the first line on number five, you'll write your equation, either the repeated addition or you'll do your multiplication. On the second line, you need to write the answer to the question. The question they asked is, what will be the perimeter? Your answer should be, the perimeter will be 48 feet. The perimeter will be 48 feet. So whether you did repeated addition or whether you did multiplication, you still gotta write the answer to the question they're asking. And finally, number six, math shows the world is, look at the top of your page if you don't know. Math shows the world is designed. And that design is very, let me think, think about the firefly. Think about the honeycomb with the bumblebees. The words you're looking for, I'm sure any words you came up with would be just fine. Um, math shows the world is designed and that design is very complex. Maybe you said complicated or maybe you said specific. Um, any of those would be just fine. The things that we see in nature the way that insects work with their instinct um, or the ways that their bodies work with animals and even people, guys. There's no way that these things just happened. There was a purpose. Someone had to design all of this to happen. So math like this shows us that there was a design to everything. It was done on purpose. And that design isn't easy. That design is very complex. Okay, now turn in your work text to page 227 and 228. 227 and 228. Use that blue box. It says at the top perimeter and area. Perimeter is the distance around a shape or a figure. Area is the space within a region or figure. Okay. Um, I think because we've done, this is more practice for you. I don't think I need to walk through these pages with you. I think you're probably pretty, pretty great where you're at. So you'll do page 227 and 228. Your um, review text pages today are going to be 223 and 224. Make sure you're getting that practice in. Make sure you're asking questions if you need it. If you need to use extra paper, like um, scratch paper, some of that notebook loose leaf paper that we sent home with you, do it. Use the extra, draw the pictures, um, whatever you need to do to help you along, okay? As always. Ask the questions when you're not sure. Tomorrow is your chapter review. And then Wednesday um, is when you are supposed to take a test. But I need to make sure that you guys are doing your um, extra math, even if you're doing it just a little bit, okay? Um, because that's going to help you practice and that's going to help you right where you're at with math, okay? Um, be working on those things, okay? I'll see you guys later.